When most people watch Finding Nemo, they enjoy the fun story, beautiful visuals, and Willem Dafoe's voice acting. But when I watch it, I think, huh, how many of these little bastards could murder me? And since this entire movie takes place in Australia, spoiler alert, it's a lot. I mean, even Dory has a venomous spine on her tail. I've combed through every species list I could find, watched the movie so many times that my eyes burn, and managed to list every single fish that appears in Finding Nemo that can send you to the hospital, if not outright kill you. And no, it's not just the sharks. I'm dividing these fish into two categories, ones that can make your life really suck with things like poison but aren't gonna necessarily kill you, and the others that are entirely capable of killing a person and have done so in the past. So without further ado, let's dive right in and make the ocean even scarier by breaking down every fish that can kill you in Finding Nemo. Starting off this list, we're gonna go from the least dangerous fish to the one that has killed the most people. But even the first fish we're talking about is still a pretty nasty customer. And you're not gonna believe who it is. Yeah, the freaking Bubbles guy. I mean, this little dude does seem pretty unhinged in the movie, but that personality is kind of terrifying when you realize that it has a built-in prison shank that it slices other fish with. The actual species that this guy is is what's known as a yellow tang, a type of fish that belongs to a group called surgeon fish. How they earn the name you ask? Well, because they have a scalpel-like blade hidden on their tail that they use to cut anything that threatens them. Aquarium keepers will often come home to find a bunch of sliced open dead fish in their tank, all except for one yellow tang. And it doesn't end at fish, many owners have gotten lacerations on their hands from this species while moving stuff around the aquarium. Luckily from what I could find, the spine of the yellow tang isn't venomous, but unfortunately for everyone who impulse bought a blue tang after seeing the movie, Dory is 100% venomous. Now some people really hate throwing around that surgeon fish are toxic, saying instead that it's just a bacteria infection. But the blue tang is one that's definitely venomous in some capacity. Just like the yellow tang, this species can strike its owners with its tail spine, although this time it's going to hurt a lot more. People describe feeling immediate excruciating pain and having their fingers swelled over twice their normal size in a very short time. My guess as to how this works is similar to how the spines of things like hardhead catfish work, where they're coated in a protective layer of slime that makes the wound much more painful than it otherwise would be. After a sting, the victim's entire arm can be swollen for hours to even days after the incident. So maybe next time, think twice if you want to move that rock fixture in your fish tank, because Dory could be ready and waiting with her built-in poison dagger. There's a few other surgeon fish that appear in the movie, like the convict tang, even though its spine is much less developed than the others. But I don't want this video to be 80% surgeon fish, so we're going to move on to a species that has a very different defense mechanism. One that is so barely in the movie that I'm just gonna take this website's word for it and assume it's a two-banded soapfish. This little guy is actually related to grouper, but it doesn't have the giant size of its relatives to ward off predators, so soapfish have to use a very weird defense mechanism. They make the water around them into a bubble bath of death. They release a mucousy toxin called gramistin that repels predators, and when that poison is deployed in the open ocean, it usually just leaves the threat with a bad taste in its mouth. But if kept in a confined container, it turns into a death trap, killing all the fish within it and making your tank a lifeless biohazard. Now to actually be harmed by this poison, you'd have to be pretty stupid. Like drinking the fish tank water, stupid. But ingesting enough of this toxin is lethal to mammals, so I feel like it's warranted putting this guy on the list. A couple quick ones I want to go through are the characters of Bloat and Kathy, identified online as a longspine porcupine fish and a blue triggerfish. These fish are difficult to rank because they aren't poisonous or anything, even though many pufferfish are, but they do have incredibly strong bites. Porcupine fish have a powerful beak, whereas triggerfish have gnarly teeth, which is really shown in the character design of this fish. 
Both these animals have the ability to bite a chunk out of a human, and some triggerfish species are actually incredibly aggressive and bite any diver that enters their territory. But these specific species haven't had any records of seriously biting anyone, and the only way I could see them killing a person is if someone, like, took a swim with some fish food taped to their most vital veins and arteries. But the next animals on this list are much easier to rank because we're getting into the fish in the movie that definitely have the capacity to kill. Out of the seven truly dangerous animals we're gonna cover, you might be shocked to find out this one is the only fish that hasn't killed a single person. Although responsible for 16 attacks on people, thankfully none of them have resulted in death. The animal I'm talking about is the hammerhead shark. Now it's hard to tell what species Anchor is in the movie, but I think it's a safe bet to call him a greater hammerhead, the largest species. These guys can get huge, up to a shocking 20 feet, and they're incredibly effective predators. Specializing in hunting stingrays and no stranger to eating smaller sharks. Although this is an incredibly intimidating animal and the second biggest on the list, not a single person has been killed by one. This could be due to hammerheads usually hunting prey that's below them, unlike other sharks, and their jaws and teeth aren't nearly strong enough to deal with large mammal prey. Although attacks happen, the statistics show that you'll pull through. The next fish on our list is a bizarre one because although no deaths have been officially attributed to it, it's the most likely suspect for a death that happened in the tropical waters of Fiji, where a young man's body was found bruised and battered after suddenly disappearing when swimming through the water. The legend himself, Jeremy Wade, did an investigation on this attack in his show River Monsters and came to the conclusion that the most likely culprit was a giant trevally, the species which can be seen here in the sea turtle scene. These guys are absolute units, getting over 150 pounds and leaping out of the water to eat seabirds. These are impressive predators, but this fish won't use teeth or spines to attack you. Instead, it turns into a living battering ram as it butts into you at 40 miles an hour, doing serious internal damage. Attacks from these guys aren't limited to people as they've been recorded ramming sharks to death. Now, most of the fish so far haven't played a super big role in the movie, just serving as random background characters. But our next most deadly fish is about to completely change that. Mr. Ray, the spotted eagle ray. Yes, one of the most wholesome animals in the movie is responsible for a human death, but not in the way you probably expect. This species does have the venomous spines that stingrays are infamous for, in fact it has anywhere from two to six of them, but they aren't the deadliest aspect of this animal. Spotted eagle rays are huge, like way bigger than I had previously thought. I'm talking up to a 10 foot wingspan and sometimes weighing over 500 pounds. And as with many other rays, they have a habit of jumping out of the water which, when combined with a speeding boat, can result in a very bad time. Sadly, an incident like this resulted in the death of a woman in the Florida Keys, so far the only one attributed to this animal. The next killer fish on this list was one of my favorites when watching this movie as a kid, and I'm honestly kind of surprised it isn't responsible for more deaths. Now, everywhere online says these guys are swordfish, even though their color pattern looks a little more like a striped marlin. But I'll cover marlin in my upcoming Finding Dory video, so for now, let's just say the internet is right and call these swordfish. You might say, okay, surely there can't be that big of a difference between the two, but you'd be surprised. Marlin are the huge fish that are usually targeted by big game fishermen during the day and close to the surface. Swordfish, on the other hand, are very deep dwelling fish with giant eyes to absorb what little light there is beneath 7,000 feet of water. They do come up to the surface, but usually only at night. So they aren't as targeted as often by sport fishermen, but they do end up on the menu of papados more so than its diurnal relatives. This means, however, that there aren't as many swordfish attacks on people as marlin, but there has been one death attributed to one. In 2015, a spear fisherman in Hawaii was gored by a six-foot swordfish that he shot, and sadly, he didn't survive the ordeal. Swordfish attacks usually only occur after they've been hooked or speared, once they're wildly thrashing around. 
But just this year, a very bizarre, unprovoked attack took place where a swordfish got itself stuck in a diver's gear in Brazil, 700 feet below the surface. Which would be scary enough without a sword-laden fish squirming right next to me, so I hope this guy's therapist is working overtime. Now this one really surprised me that it's actually killed people, because it's not as massive as the other fish on the list, but its teeth more than make up for that. The Barracuda is responsible for traumatizing a lot of kids from that scene in the beginning of the movie, but this fish in the real world has done much worse. 25 attacks and 2 deaths is quite the record, but none of them came from the species maliciously attacking us. These fish have a very strong prey drive and are quick to react to stimuli that could be mistaken as easy prey. This includes jewelry and other shiny objects when in muddy water. Besides blinged out women, the other target demographic for barracuda attacks are spear fishermen, since barracuda will try to steal their impaled catch often quite violently. With a speed of almost 30 miles an hour and teeth that look like that, attacks usually result in major lacerations and even the loss of some fingers. So these fish are definitely an animal to take seriously. Now this fish would have been quite a bit further down on the list were it not for two people that it's killed this year, bringing its total kill count to 3 out of 20 total attacks. The Mako is one of the planet's most intimidating sharks and is well known as the fastest in the world. Now Chum is definitely a Mako, but oddly enough with his fins being so long he more so resembles a longfin Mako. A very uncommon and secretive species, but for the sake of this video, let's say he's a shortfin mako. The one with actually confirmed attacks. This shark uses its speed to hunt down species like marlin and tuna, and uses its incredibly sharp teeth to deal out the damage. The two attacks this year happened in less than a week of each other in roughly the same location, the waters off Egypt. One of the victims lost an arm and a leg due to the attack. This burst of attacks likely came from illegal chumming and over-harvesting of the Mako's natural food, which shows just how important it is for us to coexist with wildlife in a sustainable way. And now, finally, all that's left is the single deadliest fish in all of Finding Nemo. The one that's killed more people by far than any other. And I'm not even gonna beat around the bush, it's obviously Bruce the Great White. I was really kinda hoping there'd be some massive plot twist where one of these random guys took the trophy, but it's kinda hard to compete with a 20 foot long apex predator. As of this video, Great Whites have killed 59 people out of a total of 351 attacks. But believe it or not, it isn't the deadliest species of shark in the world. To see what that is, check out my video counting down the deadliest sharks on Earth. And let me know in the comments if you want to see me do this type of video for Finding Dory or maybe even other movies like The Lion King. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.